Hi, I'm Angela Pippos and I'm delighted to be joined by Angie Green from Stand Up Events and Move in May, St Kilda CEO Matt Finnis and Jill Scrimanis from IAG. Welcome to you all. Thank you. We're here to talk about CGU's partnership with Move in May and of course to also talk about um, the importance of inclusion and diversity in sport and in the community as well. So Angie, I'm going to start with you. Yep. Tell us about your story. Why did you create Stand Up Events and Move in May? Yeah, I, I started Stand Up Events because this is something that I'm really passionate about, especially equality and inclusion in sport, because my brother Brent, who's a freak athlete himself, um, due to his sexuality of being gay, um, he excluded himself from team sports and team environments around the age of 15, which sadly and unfortunately is not uncommon for a lot of non-hetero and gender diverse people. And I think that that's completely unacceptable and quite heartbreaking to say the least. So I started stand up events uh, just under two years ago um, in the hope that we could change some hearts and, and minds uh, along the way. Uh, the main goal of stand up events is to uh, create, we're creating customised preventative programs to implement into junior sporting codes. I think it's really important to get to people at a young age and have this conversation and create environments where everyone can be themselves and be comfortable to uh, live their authentic lives. I thought of Move in May, uh, which is known as CGU's Move in May. Um, what Move in May is, is um, it's in support of a really significant day known as IDAHOT, um, International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. Uh, but a lot of people in Australia don't know about this day or, or recognise it, um, and it's really symbolic. So uh, what it is, it's um, a fun run walk around the tan, um, and there are zones of entertainment around the town and it ends in a post-event celebration that, that welcomes all people. The reason why it's so important and, the, and how we promote it is that it's literally for all people. So if you are someone who believes in equality and inclusion, regardless of your sexuality and or gender, this is a space where you can come and completely be yourself and we had our first one last year and it was a really big success and what really meant so much to me last year is visually seeing that there were so many members of the straight community there were so many non-hetero and gender diverse people and in that space nothing mattered you could be completely yourself and it was really community driven and it was absolutely wonderful so that first one achieved everything that you set out to achieve with it Yes, yeah, it was, uh, I, I absolutely loved it and to be completely honest, we literally wouldn't be able to do this without CG and they've been incredible from the very get-go and it wouldn't be possible without them. Well Matt, tell us about your commitment to inclusion and equality as CEO of the St Kilda Footy Club. Um, what does it mean to you and, and what drives you to see this sort of change? Well, similar to what Andy just talked about, um, at the end of the day, St Kilda Football Club is a community organisation. You know, we, we might have been around for over 140 years and, and we, we may play you know, professional team sport, but at the end of the day, our, our, our team, our club grew out of a community. Now that community just happened to be a really unique part of Melbourne, which is you know, this kind of melting pot of humanity. And, and, um, and so for our footy club, you know, we, we really believe that a, a community can't thrive unless everyone belongs. And, and I think you need to really emphasise the word everyone. And, and the unfortunate reality is that not everyone has felt welcome at the football. I've always felt belonging at the footy. Um, and, and so, so it's, it's not fair that, that others don't. It's not right, as you say, it's not, it's not acceptable. And so, you know, at our footy club, we, we just want to do our bit to make sure that, that everyone is welcome. AFL Pride match. Um, I was there on the night last yes. season with you both and it was just fantastic, wasn't it? Tell us about the, um, the thinking behind that and how well received that game was. It, it grew out of the community. Um, there was a community Pride Cup event that was led um, by community footballer Jason Ball and the Yarra Glen Football Club. We thought, wow, what, what, if we could take the power of AFL to shine a light here um, that can take 
a really simple message and hopefully have a broader impact. Jill, inclusion and diversity is important in the business world as well. Um, you've recently been elected as a co-chair of the Pride at IAG group with Sean Mowry. Tell us about this group. Sure, um, and, and indeed it's with great pride that I take up uh, that role and, and it is born of the people, Pride at IAG, for, as in um, it is an employee network resource group. Our organisational mission is to make your world a safer place and we have a spirit about being closer, braver and faster. And so with Pride at IAG, it is about the LGBTI community and our allies working together in our own unique way to live that, that vision and our organisational purpose and, and spirit. And we do that through um, awareness, you know, raising awareness of some of the issues and challenges, sharing stories, education, and also championing equity for our community, um, be it with employees as well as customers, our partners and the, and the wider community. The answer lies in education as yeah. well, doesn't it? What advice would you give coaches of junior sport? Because that's where we really need to, to change attitudes at a young age. Yeah, I think it comes um, also with, the again, the misconception that language doesn't really affect people. So one of the, the, the common kind of conversations that I have is, oh no, when I say that's so gay or faggot or poof or homo, that that doesn't mean what you think it means. And it's just like, I, I understand that th there may not be an intent um, behind your language or any you know, malicious kind of nature to it. Um, but the reality is that can really hurt and damage people and keep people potentially in the closet or allow people to remove themselves from that culture because they just don't want to be around that. But it really does start with individuals, I believe. And so that's making people aware that the impact that their language and behaviour can have on others, um, which can be very negative and detrimental. It's also, I know it's hard, but it's also calling out certain language and behaviour. In my view, walking past something like that is the same as condoning it. And so it's also giving people the permission to have those kind of conversations and be like, do you know what? It's totally unacceptable here to use certain language and to act in certain ways. And I do think that everyone has to take more responsibility, whether that's coaches, staff, players, umpires, every single person needs to make an effort and have a responsibility to make their culture a safe space for absolutely everyone. Yeah, and I think that, that point around the power of coaches, and I imagine it's not dissimilar in a workplace to a frontline leader. You know, yeah. people understanding the power and influence that they have in the lives of others, and that's certainly something which our coach, Alan Richardson, who, um, you know, he, having raised two, you know, young boys and now being in charge of 40 young men day in, day out, and, you know, he, he understands the power of the role of a coach. And it's not just about teaching them how to kick better and handball better and execute a game plan. Uh, you know, so the, the more that, that, as I say, whether it's the, the managers, our frontline leaders, our, our coaches, if, if we understand the influence the pay can have, that I think it broadens out that, the conversations that you might have with people as well. Absolutely, and, and that, that is the, absolutely the case around like be it leadership and to Angie's point about it's up to all the individuals as well, all of us, to take a role there and to take a much broader perspective. And it, for us in the corporate space, it might be more around that language of inclusion there and not making assumptions. So it, it is a piece around you know just being mindful of the language and it's certainly unintended but it's falling into the type. Move in May on Sunday the 21st of May. Yes. What are you looking forward to the most? Last year was just so exciting as I said you know um, seeing so many different people from from so many different walks of life and com community just made my heart feel so incredibly full and um, this year uh, what I'm really excited about is our ticket sales are, are much higher than they, than they were last year, which is, which is great. And so I'm excited that the word's getting out there that this is for all people and um, you can completely be yourself. And I'm just really excited about, it, it is very entertaining. There's entertainment all around the tan and then it results in a post-event celebration that has food and drink trucks, um, a bar, a picnic patch, dancers, DJs. Um, as I again, just, as I said again, just for all people. And I've already received some 
emails and letters and things saying um, that this is the first time that my family's joining me or certain friends are joining me or things like that, which just really mean so much to me because that's what it's all about. We just want to change hearts and minds along the way and just show people that we're all the same. It's going to be great. So look, Angie, Matt and Jill, thank you for joining in the conversation and for all the great work you do in promoting inclusion and diversity and not just in sport, but in the community as well. So I will see you on the 21st of May.